my microphone on <sighs> Don't get this wrong Whip it out and press record Let the camera do what it's for Lights and sound, camera action I am rolling, we're getting blasted And you can feel it, making connection I had my erection, yeah this ain't no test stand We're seeking perfection, we're starting production I feel the emotion, or maybe just hoping Someone will listen, someone will listen Someone will watch this, someone will hit this We're going live on the internet If it hasn't happened yet Whip it out, capture it Not now License, sound, camera, action Step into attraction Get a reaction Yeah, yeah But what if it doesn't work? What if it hurts? What if they find out I am the worst? I, I wouldn't worry about I, it. I really wouldn't honestly, worry about it, I think. Honestly, I think that... People are probably... People are dying, dying to, hear to hear what you have to say. What you have to say, you know, about right? anything. Right? Regardless, try, try not, not to think, to think about, about it. it. Deal? We're going live on the internet. It hasn't happened yet. Go. We've been out live. We're going live. Gonna put my work out on the these people yeah, feel my head. head Gonna play back yeah, every word I said sure Gonna take the whole world in my bed Gonna fight these feelings up in Gonna push record and publish next Gonna take the whole world in my bed My bill on top will raise the dead So this is the video in 2021 about video gear for making internet videos. This is from my perspective, based on my experience. Okay? That was this. Perfect. Best practices for internet video in 2021, all right, from my perspective. And in my perspective, someone like a Casey Neistat, for example, was a sea change in, in video, in internet technology. What do you want to call it? I don't know, because he's not using billions of dollars worth of gear. He has no crew. He has no, you know, I and mean, some sets he did. But the point being, it got popular. It was a dude with a fucking handy cam. It got popular. Right, and he's just one of countless, countless others on the internet making videos. Lots of them on YouTube, but this video is applicable to TikTok, Instagram video, because the truth is that video is a great technology for just getting, you know, directly in through our eyes and our ears. We don't have the smell stuff yet. Smell's a big deal. If you could get smell working across the internet, you can have a smell and like a memory will come back, right? So, smell's a big deal. But this video will not be about smell. Now, if there's something I could get into your brain stem about this, it's capture. Capture, capture, capture. You can capture it all, right? You can capture it. You cannot edit it unless you have it captured. This is beginner level filmmaker advice. By the way, I am <laughs> I don't I'm not yet considering myself much of a filmmaker, but uh, I'm on my way. The editing of Things that I have captured, I have been amazed by how much the story comes together there in the editing. And I, if I don't have it, I don't have it. So capturing shit as it's happening is really quite fun, potentially. Here's the caveat. If you put a camera in front of somebody, it's going to change. If you put a microphone in somebody, it's going to in somebody or just around them. If you put a microphone in somebody, they're gonna have a, a strong reaction. If you put it even around them, they're gonna have a reaction. Capturing things changes what's about to happen, right? So, and apparently you're not supposed to record people without them knowing about it. That's a thing that you should probably like do a scout's honor on, you know, because you're gonna notice how much recording things changes the, for lack of a better term, the performance 
of people. And there's this moment in making notes for this video where I was taking notes like, you know, capturing content and exploring what my life is about and autocorrect corrected it to exploiting what my life is about. Okay, let's talk about lighting. This light right here is the Aperture 120D with the dome. And this, this right here, this is a C stand, okay? Huge, huge stand. My life changed when I got that and one of these. Now I have two of these and I set up like a little cage for overhead thing, I'm still figuring it out. This stand means that I can set it up anywhere, I can move it around, it's really nice and beefy. But this, I can't overestimate how much I love this light and how much it's changed my, you know, my setup or whatever. It's an LED light, so it doesn't make the room really hot. There's a fan in it, but it's not very loud, right? These after, it's like the, I think it's one of the most affordable, big cinema LED kind of things like this. Aperture kind of crushing the game. Okay, so my, I have two pieces of advice on lighting for you, okay? The first one is simply lighting is looking. Like, look at the shot. Look at, look at it. Before out, not don't before you even pull out the camera, look at what's going on, right? Lighting, there's a lot you can do with lighting, and to be honest, that's not my forte. I don't know how to do it. I'm just just starting my journey of that because you can be like, what is the emotion in this scene? What's the transformation the character goes through in this scene? Like thinking like that will make your your life easier if you're making videos, if you're making content of any kind, if you're writing sales pages, thinking about transformation. What is the character being trans what, what's the character want and how are they being transformed in this scene? Right? And then you can make your lighting reflect that. You know, that's the, the, but most importantly, just lighting is looking. And then the second thing is just film by a window. There's also tricks like having a little backfill light, having like these lights, which were just given to me by somebody. I have no idea if they're good or not or what they even are, but those are just fill lights. So there's a little bit of room, there's light in the, in the background. Cause I hate the, normally the lighting <laughs> Normally the lighting in your house is shit. So there's tips and tricks about all that stuff. You can go like for years online in YouTube just searching about camera lighting stuff. But for the most part, it's that guy for me. A lot of lighting and camera stuff happens outdoors for a lot of us content makers. So a lot of the time you might not have to worry about it at all. Now let's talk about sound, okay? Sound is really critical. Sound matters so much in video because I think it's actually easier to trick the eyes than it is to trick the ears a lot of the time. Oh, you probably can't hear me very well because my microphone is down here. Oh, okay, let's pull this. See how this gets a lot easier to hear me? That is a huge upgrade for giving someone's brain the ability to understand what the hell you're trying to get across. This is the Rode VidMic Pro. I have got this a long time ago because it has a USB charger. It's like a battery in there. You just charge it with a USB micro cable right on. I, it turns on automatically when I turn on my camera. It has been epic. I love it. My friend Jesse, who's a big time YouTube guy, he d uses the one that doesn't have any power. It's just the video micro or something like that. Even cheaper, even less to worry about. With this, you gotta make sure your battery's charged. But I've never run out of batteries. I don't know how long this thing lasts. There's not even a battery indicator as far as I can tell. I just plug it in every now and then and it works perfectly. Almost all the time I'm recording out in the field, it's just the Rode Smart Mic, but in the studio, I use this Mix Pre 6 from, I think, Sound Design. I absolutely love this thing. It records to an SD card. There's little limiters on each of the channels, but you don't really, it's not, a, not the highest quality limiter. I got four XLR inputs on this thing. Everything that I'm recording audio into my computer for the last two years has been on this device. I absolutely love it. Thank you, sound design. They didn't give it to me. I paid full price for it. I'm just thanking them for making good shit. And then I use these Audio-Technica AT875R. I have several of these. I have four, one for each input here because they work well as a podcast microphone, honestly, and they're a shotgun mic. 
Thanks. Okay, let's talk about cameras. Here is the Canon EOS R. This is the first Canon that I switched over from before this. I built a video business using a GH2 that I got used for like 600 bucks. No record limit, cropped sensor, but can record uh, forever. That's all, that's all I needed. But when I switched to a full frame Canon with the autofocus, with like the, the, you know, everybody's like the Canon color is not a focus. I don't know. I didn't know anything about that. Right. I loved this 15 to 35 millimeter lens because it was wide. This camera here, this is the R6. What's important about this is it films 4k full frame. Okay. Now it overheats. Uh, if you're recording at 60 frames a second, 4k for too long, it, there's not, nothing's perfect here. Honestly, if I was starting from scratch, I think I would probably be going with the Sony FX3 and Sony lenses at this point. But this is my kit right here. And honestly, I can do anything that I need to. With the R6, I can film 120 frames a second, no sound. With this one, it's like just like a secondary camera at this point. This is the 24 to 105. This lens, you can get great for filming things not where you're not you're not filming yourself like this is at 105 so this is really really kind of close probably a little too close but i do love this lens for any time that i'm filming something on the, like out here out here in front of me this lens is great because i can get all the way out to there and just by the way i live i live on their autofocus now I almost film everything just auto. This video I'm filming things in log and like color correcting like I used to, but for a long time I've just done just Canon's auto. Uh, and it's been great. It's been really good. I can't overstate enough how much switching to these full frame things really changed my life because the autofocus is so good, number one. And number two, I don't know, just the quality's really high. And it makes you feel like you look like Peter McKinnon or Casey Neistat or something. And that was important for me. You know, sometimes you gotta buy a new pair of running shoes before you really get out running. I will say this though, this stuff is very expensive in comparison to what other people say you should start with. Many people talk about a Sony like flip cam kind of thing to start with. And I have used my fair share of those, but nothing has compared. Nothing has compared to these Canon setups with the autofocus and the just, cause I am not a good enough camera person. I just don't know enough to use a cheaper camera. And I do find that these things look pretty damn good most of the time. I don't know what this looks like. I didn't even think about this shot. Lighting is looking. But if I was starting from scratch, I'd honestly, I would, I would start with the phone. If you start with a phone and you start making videos, first of all, it does, you know, the, the, uh, this is the 12 Pro, the iPhone 12 Pro. It has the wide angle lens, which changes everything. That thing's amazing. The telephoto lens is a little bit like, oh, okay. The regular lens does a great job. That's where all of the best quality is. But the sound is decent. The footage looks like iPhone footage, but you can get away with lots of it. And you can film in 60 frames a second. I think you can film in super slow-mo as well, but I film everything in 60 frames a second so I can slow it down at least a little bit, giving it a little, you can throw on some background music and all of a sudden you got a little, get a little moment happening. So do not discount how much you can get done with this. Don't discount how much, how many YouTubers out there are shooting lots of B-roll with this when they're out and about. Cause I don't want to have to take this huge thing. Here's my like gorilla pod, which I try not to use as much as possible because all it takes is one fall for this shit to fall off and ruin your phone, <laughs> ruin your whole day. But this is expensive and it's big, you know, it's big. So don't discount just going with the phone because you know what the hardest thing about video making is, right? It's not getting a good image or a good shot. It's having something fucking interesting going on. That's the hardest thing. It's having something to say. One last bit here is have uh, several several batteries. Can you see them in there? I have six batteries for this setup, okay? Because, anyways, and I never and I, and I don't tend to need more than that. 
This video, by the way, sponsored by Hex. This is one of their backpacks that I have actually really been liking. Simple admin pocket up front. I live out of this thing. Got my charger. Anything that is like grab and go goes right here and then right in here for me. Like my glasses, this has a nice soft velour on the inside. My laptop goes right here on the front. Again, more soft sort of velour vibes. I like that my laptop goes here because that means I don't have to get into the back of the bag to get my laptop. The back of the bag is reserved for one big ass camera cube. I put my Gorillapod right here. I love to travel with this inside my bag so it doesn't get caught on things. My camera goes right in here with my microphone because there's a zipper on the top right here that allows me to easily get into here without opening that. So this is my quick access into the camera cube. Love that. Then I tend to just sort of throw some uh, some pouches in here. Like this is right now a tech pouch from uh, Track. This is from Moment. I just throw this stuff in here with my Bellroy thing there. I oftentimes will put my batteries and stuff right in here. This is a little bit, I don't tend to use this very much because I don't like the Velcro, but this is perfect for batteries and listen, you're gonna need something to keep some SD cards in. I really dig this one from Nomadic and Peter McKinnon. They did a great job with this. So this is like where this stuff goes as well as my Sandmark ND filters. Shout out to Sandmark. But really, this is all in this Hex bag and I've liked using it a lot. Like a lot, a lot, actually. Not like, not groundbreaking materials. I could see some upgrades in here in the future. This is kind of simple, you know, for a water bottle pocket, but to be honest, it has worked for me. I traveled with this recently as my daily carry. Kind of an interesting look. You know, they've got it in different colors. Shout out to Hex. Hex are making some really good, I like their Ranger DSLR backpack. You've seen that in some of my other videos before. Totally stoked that Hex reached out to sponsor the channel. Uh, thanks, Hex. You're awesome. Repeat after me, please, please do. Actually repeat these words out loud after me. And not all these words that I'm saying right now, but the ones I'm about to say. When I say now, those are the words that I mean, that I want you to repeat, okay? Repeat after me, now. I will learn to edit. Learning to edit will change how you capture things. Do you understand? When you have edited yourself lots and lots of times or what you've captured lots and lots of times, when you've seen what works, what doesn't work, when you've showed it to people and they don't really get the reaction that you were hoping for, that's where we're learning. That is, there's no shortcut. Teach yourself to edit. How do you do that? By editing. Look up some videos do some things. I have a link below at this time code to a thing that I'm making on editing stuff, right? Because like I said, I'm amazed how much of the story comes together after I've captured it and then I've got it in my app is Final Cut Pro. I've got it in there and I'm going through and I'm keywording little chunks and then I make a story out of the keywords. It's, it's kind of easy. It happens really fast. It happens naturally and organically. The content feels, I feel like I'm discovering the video that we're making instead of I am scripting it out from the beginning and trying to, yo, we, we must have it look like this. When we are done, this is how it's supposed to be. All I'm saying is promise to yourself that you're going to learn how to edit. I, I think it's worth doing. My wife, she wanted to make a course. I'm a professional video guy. I made over 40 different courses at my first business, fizzle.co. You can go check it out. The point is, why wouldn't I help my wife make a course? <laughs> Number one, I was busy. Number two, I knew it would affect how she did everything later on in life. If she learned how to edit herself first and then had to deal with staring at yourself on camera that whole time. It makes you a better performer. It makes you a better presenter, okay? And that's a skill that you get, that, that's, that's what I'm doing here. I have all this technology to help me make it look a little bit better, but for, for the most part, all I'm doing is pressing record and then like I'm doing my shtick. You know, back to that whole thing about exploiting your life. Alan Watts has this great quote. Actually, I think he was quoting some Upanishad or Buddhist text. And it's like, I promise to abstain from exploiting my passions. Ugh, 
It's like all of passion hustle culture is about exploiting our passions. Anyways, we might have gotten ourselves into a conundrum. Another thing here I want to mention to you is uh, storage. This is a little hard drive which is one terabyte. That's what I need. I don't like switching out these things often. I do have a, that's an SSD little guy. And then I have this thing here, which is from what I just call it my G drive. What is, yeah, G drive. This is a 10 terabyte hard drive, okay? That's a big boy. I consolidated a lot of my hard drives into this. What is important about this is, it is nice to have that footage to go back to later if this is something that you continue to do over time. I'll just say that. Know that archiving and keeping this stuff may be something you wish you had thought about a little bit sooner. That happens to a lot of us. Okay, so storage concerns is a concern. Okay, so lights, sound, lights and sound, camera action. <laughs> did you like that intro? I did. That was fun. I got a little carried away, I think. But lights sound, camera, action, right? What's the action that you're capturing? What is going on? This is the most important thing about the most important thing when you're making video stuff, right? And so I'm not gonna teach you about copywriting, which is the marketing world's way of trying to find something alluring really quickly to draw people in. But like I said in the very beginning, point number one is like make an alluring intro. Suck me in with something that is like relevant to my interests, right? Puppies. Puppies are always useful for that kind of thing. I will share this one bit about copywriting. The whole thing about internet copywriting, sales copywriting, anything, is you write a headline that gets them to read the next sentence. And the purpose of that next sentence is to get them to read the next sentence, right? The human brain, like once we get sucked into something and it's like we're like a little bit interested, it's like you can keep drawing us in and two hours later we go like, did I just watch a two hour bag review? Which maybe has more to do with how bored people are on the internet than how good any particular content creator is, but action. And to me, the first trick on that is what's what's the alluring intro here? What, what are we drawing them in? What is What is interesting or important about this topic that we're making a video on? Right, do with that what you will. Now, where are you going to put these videos? Okay, because the people are apparently at TikTok. I have still haven't been there. Apparently, all the people are at TikTok. I use YouTube because I like long form videos. I like chatting with people. Uh, and then I also use Instagram because that's where a lot of my people are. A lot of the people that I'm meeting in the world are like, they're like, what's your Instagram? People are still using Instagram. Apparently, Facebook is still a thing. I don't doubt that for a second, but I just couldn't be arsed. I have not been on Facebook. I have not been. Suffice it to say, I'd probably make more fans if I was there. My lights just shut off. Okay. I guess it's time for me to end this video. Holler in the comments about any questions that you have. I hope this was somewhat helpful, but the most important thing is you have everything you need probably in your phone and your brain, your like heart, your fucking spirit, your soul. Like what, what, what gets you? You know, I do have a link below to go deeper on some of my thoughts on this. I do have lots of thoughts on this and I will be likely creating something for sale in the future on this. So, you know, holler at your boy. Click that link in the description. Also, shout out to my patrons. If you like this video, holler at me at Patreon, patreon.com slash Chase Reeves. Same thing if you just want to do a one-time donation, buymeacoffee.com slash Chase Reeves. Holla at your boy. Be yourself. Everyone else is taken. Bye.